we are also together here. Uh, it was a one year of work and now we have this result. <laughs> I think it is the first step uh, with our cooperation and um, I'm very grateful to the uh, Salome, Maria Jose, Laura, um, Miguel Angel, uh, all of our team uh, for supporting us in all of our action, uh, every little step. Um, and um, I wish uh, very good inspiration for the, all the artists um, and hope that we will have uh, um, good results in our art practices uh, behind the very uh, difficult thematic uh, that also we will speak uh, about uh, this um, evening, this afternoon. So uh, I uh, want to invite Katya Taylor, uh, our honorary curator from Ukraine, uh, to open the um, residence officially uh, and um, to speak a little bit with uh, our participants. Hi, it is a really pleasure to be here and uh, to open <laughs> this program. Uh, it's a huge honor for me, and I'm really looking forward to come uh, in the com in in the next two weeks and see you all um, in live. Um, I uh, I thought uh, about what should I talk today because we have such an interesting topic that is um, uh, interesting and wide. Uh, we want to talk about climate, of course. We want to talk about war and we want to talk about art and then I think we will really go to the deep conversation later on during the residency of how we can build that conversation and hopefully we can build a project out of that conversation because I uh, certainly believe that um, an exhibition or an art project as just the final result, the final dot um, of uh, communication, relationship, uh, research, and the conversation. Uh, so I really look forward to to do that with you and to know all of you better. Uh, so um, in the recent months, I have been uh, thinking about uh, Ukrainian landscape. It's like probably this is something that is uh that would be the subject of my personal interest and uh maybe something will resonate to you maybe not but i will just share with you some of my insights and hopefully that will be yeah there will be some some point where we can start this conversation so i have been thinking about ukrainian landscape uh and uh, how it has changed uh precisely in artistic practices so it first came to me uh, when I was curating the exhibition, uh, The Captured House, that took place uh, in the first months of the full-scale uh, invasion a year and a half ago. And uh, at that time, the artist uh, gave me more than 200 artworks uh, that were created in the first months of the full-scale invasion. And uh, seeing them together, uh, I actually uh, saw some trends that was pretty unexpected. Uh, for example, uh, the media they, that they have uh, used, it was um, mainly drawing because before, and I invited different artists, it was media artists uh, that worked with installations, performances, videos, and suddenly all of them turned into the uh, paper and the pencil again because they had to do something that they would easily take with them escaping from the war and they had to work with the with the, with with something like um that was easy to create uh but also the subject that they choose now they uh often uh didn't go anymore to the deep topics but for researching like they did for researching some subjects for years but now it was rather a reflection to the present so uh, many of them um drew uh, things that they just saw in front of themselves, the, uh, like reality. They wrote to a safer place, sometimes battlefields, sometimes destroyed buildings, 
that was pretty simple. Um, the second time I thought about the landscape was a year later, this summer, when I was visited the exhibition How Are You? at the Ukrainian house. It's a big exhibition space in Kiev. Uh, and there were about 100 artists and about 500 artworks that were created during the year of the full-scale invasion. So there was a bigger frame. And among those things, um, I, was, um, I saw also the landscape. Uh, uh, and that is really attracted my attention again. So uh, here often it will be the photo documentation of the war events, sometimes exhumations, sometimes sometimes it will be burial places of citizens in the, their own yards, uh, as in the occupied territories, and there will be a surreal landscape of a silent forest or a video of the road uh, seen through the window from the train. Some works will be more deep uh, and will be a continuation of artistic practice, and some others will be a reflection to the something that just happened today or yesterday. So if, especially if you go to Instagram, you see so much reflections that is, it, there is a tra tra tragedy today, and it means that tomorrow there will be an artistic reflection. So uh, it's a very quick reaction, and art usually doesn't... Um, doesn't work like that. Uh, I had never before thought of a landscape uh, as a rhetorical or a political piece, but really the only thing that has changed is only my perspective, only my lens. The political landscape was always there. Um, and recently I was uh, visiting the another exhibition of a beautiful Ukrainian artist, uh, Maria Privachenko. She, she like, uh, Ukrainian Soviet artist, a uh, na naive, naive, naive artist who worked in the Soviet times, and many of her works like are very simple and funny and childish, uh, but only at a first glance, really. Um, and they pretend to be not political because this is the only way you you could act actually in the Soviet Union, uh, not to be repressed, uh, not to be killed or sent to Siberia, and signatures. To the works of Primachenka usually will be very smart and very much political. Uh, and for example, there was a, uh, a tragedy in Chernobyl, and she signed one of her artworks, a nuclear, nuclear flower. And the only flower we'll see in the picture is just a beautiful flower, nothing else. So those signs, those signatures of the artworks were usually uh, a clue to the uh, political landscape. So in this sense, the political landscape uh, is not new at all, especially if we look uh, at um, this um, subject through um, the colonial lens again, um, because when we uh, think about the past uh, and uh, what it happened to, not only to Ukraine, but rather to many, uh, countries of the past USSR, we will see that all of those lands were used by politicians um, just for or their own needs. For example, I don't know if you knew, but it's like just an interesting fact that uh, the oil that were uh, oil that were needed for a Second World War was not taken from the Russian land, but was taken from Azerbaijan land. And they were like almost uh, all empty and destroyed, and infrastructure was destroyed by the 1991. So, but none of us could really talk, uh, not in terms of openly conversation, not in terms of art. So today we have this possibility, and we can, of course, and we, not only we can, but we have to look in the past and to think what really has happened to us if this political landscape has changed and really reflect to it through the art practices and we have the power, the right, um, and um, have to do it today. So what I would suggest us to do is really uh, to give attention to um, what we have in our past and our present, because the USSR is over, but our situation is not over. Uh, when we, for example, talk about our 
um, like Kachovska uh, station that were destroyed and we have ecological catastrophe around it. And this is the only big one that I can talk about, but there are of course uh, many, many others that really uh, need our attention and world doesn't know much about it. And I believe strongly that art it is the language that uh, we can and we should talk to the world uh, about it. Uh, give it this subject uh, an attention, this space, uh, and uh, really to have this conversation of how the artistic practices can help us to um, talk about it uh, to the rest of the world. Um, that is pretty much it. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I really hope that it is uh, one of the yeah one of the places where we can start the, this conversation and connect the art and uh, ecology. Thank you.